Listen, I'm sitting here in New York City. I've lived here for almost eight years now. Every day I semi wonder why I still live here, especially because my heart belongs to really at this point one state and one state only. And that's where I spent my pandemic existence. And that is the great state of Florida. I feel like many people are starting to think to themselves, why do I not live in Florida? Uh, well, now we have several more reasons why I think there should be a further mass migration down south. First of all, let's give a big congratulations to the Florida Panthers. They took game seven last night, uh, their first Stanley Cup ever. And once again, proving why the Sunshine State just does things better. In fact, we've known for quite a while the Sunshine State has done things just a little bit differently in terms of sports, because when you just look at hockey alone, uh, hockey teams in the past three of the last five years have gone on to win the Stanley Cup. So uh, kudos to the great sports atmosphere down in Florida, uh, especially kudos to the Florida Panthers who were able to get it done in Game 7. I mean, although we must give some props, you know, as we like to do here, uh, to the opposing team, they just came shy, one goal short of a historic Stanley Cup win. And this is after being done, being down three to nothing in the series. Uh, a lot of people just kind of counted them out. They came, battled their way back, but ultimately the Panthers were just too much for them. Okay. So there's one reason, obviously, why Florida's great. You have a great sports atmosphere. Who doesn't like great sports, uh, in the state that you're living in adds a lot more entertainment value to where you're at. Uh, but also, uh, we have just found out that Florida, once considered a major battleground state, that is the case no more. Uh, just as of this week, Biden's campaign's re-election chair, Jen O'Malley Dillon, has now officially ruled out Florida as a battleground state just days before what I know is going to be the most epic presidential debate, probably in history, that's going to go down on Thursday, uh, just a couple of days from now. Uh, Governor DeSantis weighed in on this exclamation or this proclamation rather on X. He said this, quote, for decades, Florida was the largest, most important battleground state in presidential elections. Today, even the Biden campaign acknowledged those days are over, over, over. I sound like Jay-Z here. Uh, Florida is not in play in 2024. That's huge news. Further, making the case why Florida is just that damn awesome. Uh, again, that's where I spent my COVID existence. I went down there within days of the pandemic really starting to take over the country. I think it was on Friday that I hosted First Take. I hosted basically that whole week when things started going to hell and things just kept shutting down, shutting down, shutting down. And then I was told by WWE that we were no longer having Monday Night Raw in, what was it, Pittsburgh on Monday because everything was starting to shut down. And instead, I needed to go to Orlando to the Performance Center. And that's where Monday Night Raw was going to be held. Little did we know that's where it was going to be held for, God, months. And then we went on to, to move Monday Night Raw and also Friday Night SmackDown was also then moved to Tampa. So clearly, Florida was where it was at. Florida was the best, and everyone keeps talking about how horrible COVID was, how horrible the pandemic was. I had an amazing pandemic. I was riding a bike every day. I was working out at an outside gym that was built by the strength and conditioning coach for WWE, who I was very good friends with. Uh, I was drinking high noons, which were made famous at that point in time by Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool Sports. Uh, I got a new dog. I was literally living the dream in Florida. And guess what? Just the other day, I had to renew my driver's license, which for years now, because even before the pandemic, I lived for a very short stint in Orlando. I just had to renew my driver's license. And guess what? Did I decide to get a, get a New York state driver's license? Absolutely not. Guess who renewed in Florida? This girl. Guess who again registered to vote in Florida? This girl. Uh, I'm a Florida girl through and through, and that's not going to change for anything. Uh, maybe one day I'll even make it official and I'll become a Florida resident full time. We'll see. My mother has a place down there, so I'm always welcome to go live with mom for the rest of my life, I'm sure. But that doesn't really sound like something that might be good for me as an adult woman. So uh, probably won't happen, but let's just give credit where it's due. Congra to cr congratulations to Florida as a whole. No longer a battleground state. They have solely cemented uh, 
what is now, you know, their politics and, and no one can interfere with those. And also props to the Florida Panthers for pulling off a amazing Stanley Cup win, bringing yet another trophy to the Sunshine State. Uh, now let's bring in a guy who also lives in another state that seems like a lot more people are moving to. Maybe not a state that's quite as great as Florida in my mind, but he lives in Tennessee. We can't fault him there. So let's go ahead and bring in Mike Gunzelman, who I also would like to say thank you to. Uh, for your great work these past couple of weeks while I was recovering from surgery, hosting remotely from Tennessee. So thank you for that, Guns. I appreciate that. Are you good? Is everything all right? How's our Charlie Everything's doing? Good, good, you know? I needed the little awesome. bit of R&R. Uh, your girl wasn't able to move around as as uh, carefree as she normally is, but okay. uh, now good. we're back on our feet, it, yeah. and uh, yeah. here we are. Celebrating uh, together uh, an amazing win for Florida, a couple of amazing wins for Florida. I was going to say, what a Monday night for everybody out there. I mean, first off, I mean, the NBA finals were an absolute disaster unless you're from Boston. So all we kept rooting for was hockey. Please, for the love of God, can the Florida Panthers versus the Edmonton Oilers please give us something that we can root about? Because there's honestly nothing better than to watch uh, hockey playoffs and well, by far. It's so exciting. Even if you have nothing invested, of course, sports gambling, sports betting is a lot uh, these days that anybody can be invested in. But yes, yeah, so the Edmonton Oilers were down 3-0 and came back to bring it to a game seven. And the Panthers ended up winning 2-1. to one, But that third period was absolutely wild. And then, of course, uh, Tennessee, 1951, last time. Boom, let's go. Uh, that game was wild as well. I had it on the, you know, the duo box, you know Split what I mean? Screen. TV, 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 TV. Yeah, it was wild. Awesome stuff on a Monday night. That's what we want. Um, yeah, congratulations. And uh, Tennessee, by the way, was balling down here in Nashville last night. Orange everywhere for the Vols. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And for sure, I want to get into that. But guns, let's just first let's let's focus on Florida. I know you want to yeah. shift the focus to Tennessee real quick. And oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But Florida. No, Florida. I mean, Let's also talk about the fact that Florida is not even a battleground state anymore. I mean, for for a long period of time, that was a state that politicians, presidential candidates knew that they had to come in strong and take if they wanted to be successful in a presidential election. Now, look at this. The the Biden campaign is like, you know what? We're not even going to focus any of our efforts there because what's the point? And right now they have a lot of efforts that need to be focused elsewhere because uh, things are, are not looking so hot on the Biden front, but Florida off the table belongs to the Republicans and for good reason. Well, yeah, I think what we're seeing here is Ron DeSantis showed the last couple of years uh, what the potential of a Florida could be. Also, the amount of people that have left other states. I can tell you New York, and Cali, especially and New, New York. York. Yeah. Yeah. That have all bounced down there. Now, those aren't a lot of them Democrats bouncing. Those are people that have uh uh, you know, Republican tendencies or money or et cetera, you know, you know, you know the deal. So, uh, yeah. So a lot of them went down to Florida. So uh, I like, wait, hold on. I like how you said, I know the deal after you said they have money, you know, the deal. I'm like, do I know the deal? Well, I wish I knew Democrat the deal. Stuff. I wish I knew more of the deal when it came to that. But maybe your mom does. All right. Like, yeah. Oh, by the way, your uh, pandemic experience was absolutely wild compared to what I had to do in New York City, where yeah. we literally, you know, you know, I have time hop on my phone. So it shows you like your memories every day about I like, have that too. Posted. We stood on opposite sides of the effing sidewalk and the street with masks on to talk to each other when it first went down. Me and my neighbors. Oh like when my you look God. back at that, that was crazy. That went forever. And uh, uh unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. But yes, of course, yeah, Florida. Um, I'm not surprised. You know, Ron DeSantis really showed what you can get. A lot of people move down there, income tax, et cetera, no income tax, you know. But I do think that uh the states are gonna be in play. Arizona, you gotta think about Georgia, Michigan, and more like that. Pennsylvania, maybe a little bit, but uh yeah, I mean, I'm surprised. That the Biden administration actually kind of admitted that Florida's not in play, but uh, you know, at least somebody in Biden's camp uh, realizes what the what the deal is. But I would watch out for Arizona, Georgia, and Michigan for sure.
Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a really interesting debate, too. Uh, something that really struck me was when Caroline Levitt, you know, Trump's press secretary, was on CNN. Was it yesterday? Uh, and she was completely shut down because she was just literally trying to state some facts, saying that yeah. Jake Tapper was comparing for years now Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler, which is egregious of a comparison to make. And she was solely trying to bring that fact forward. And the host, Casey, was like, nope, sorry, if you're going to disparage my colleagues, you're not welcome on the show. And it's like, oh, wait, facts aren't welcome on the show. So you can only imagine, Guns, what this debate is going to look like on Thursday with CNN at the helm making all the rules. I have a feeling there's going to be two separate sets of rules, two separate sets of fact checkers one for Biden, one for Trump. And I feel like the ones for Biden are just going to decide not to do their jobs. And there's not going to be any real fact checking as far as any statement that comes out of Biden's mouth is concerned. Uh, honestly, I'm going to be uh, looking forward to what Biden is all uh, hyped up on, because when you saw the State of the Union, that guy was definitely taking a pill or something, allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> because he had more energy than ever before. So we see uh, President Biden on Thursday all of a sudden out of nowhere get all this hyped up because, of course, they, they have to make the everything's about optics. We learned about from the JFK debate years ago, et cetera. Everything's about optics. And, uh, you know, Biden did look good for the State of the Union and the fact that he was able to actually uh, deliver his speech. Let's look to see how he actually uh, performs on Thursday. But, um, you know, it's uh, it, it is frustrating because for years it was always supposed to be the media is supposed to be, you know, you know nonpartisan, et cetera. But for CNN to do what they did, where they literally cut off somebody. And the reason I think that they did was I don't think that host knew what the heck. They didn't do the research. They was like didn't even know about what their co-hosts had said in the past. Facts hurt. Facts matter. It sucks when they go against you. Uh, welcome to CNN and MSNBC. It hurts. Yeah, it, <laughs> Being exactly. Out on it, it's it's uh it's a uh, it's an absolute mess. And uh, hey, Clay Tra play Clay Travis dealt with it when he was uh. Uh, you know, when he got called out and, uh, you know, he's banned from CNN still. And he's like, I don't know if you've been following him on Twitter, but he's been like, invite me back. Like, let's go. So, uh, yeah, it should be interesting. I do not have any faith in any of our uh, media institutions whatsoever. Um, but um, hopefully Donald Trump can uh, turn it around and uh, and do what he needs to do. But I would really like to see how Biden's going to perform. I think he's going to be all jacked up yeah. on uh, adrenaline. Maybe he'll be jacked up on jello shots, guns. Maybe that's what we need to feed to feed uh, Biden a couple jello shots before the debates go down. And that would actually, you know, Clay Travis might. CNN might have to call Clay Travis for that. So so really, we could be seeing like a full circle moment. Uh, right. Hey, we need help for Biden. Clay, we need your help because we need you to bring some of those jello shots that we know you're so famous for buying over here to President Biden, uh, which now brings us full so circle hard. into another story, guns, because Clay Travis bought a thousand jello shots for volunteer fans, uh, which helped them to win another contest. I mean, not only did they win the College World Series, the Vols, uh, but they also won another a series, if you will, for having the most jello shots. Let's take a look. I bought a thousand of these. They have to bring them out every 20 minutes or so. So we've got hundreds of jello shots. Go balls. Dive in. As many as you want. Yes, sir. I love it. All right, so I we have it. we have Florida winning a couple of a couple of things. We've got Tennessee winning a couple of things, including the Jello shot competition. I I haven't taken Jello shots guns since well, probably since college. college I haven't right? taken Jello shots in quite a while. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I saw that video when Clay tweeted it, and I'm like, let's go. Uh, listen, it was almost like a thousand Jello shots. Let's go. It's like a. Reminds me, like, in the Bible, Jesus was handing out, like, fish and, like, water to people and <laughs> wine to people and fish. I feel like Clay Travis is the modern-day Jesus when it comes to jello shots with what he just did there. But guess what? It worked. Um, a thousand jello shots is a is a move. But uh, congratulations, of course, to the uh, to the Vols. 
um, and more. But uh, yeah, I mean, listen. I'm yeah, yeah. Talk Tennessee. about that. I mean, how 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 big was that that the that the Vols won the 2024 NCAA World Series? Yeah, no. I mean, what what's what's great about what's happening right now is the fact that like other sports, you see the Little League World Series, College World Series. Um, there's a lot more attention being focused on this, and you can uh, you know become invested on it for sure. And uh, you know the betting aspect and more, but uh, yeah, the Vols. It was they, they lost the first game, best out of three. They lost the first game, came back the second game, won. But last night was wild because they gave up two runs in the eighth inning. The Vols did, and then two runs in the ninth inning. So they were only up by one after a run and score from third on a wild pitch. So all of a sudden, you're like, oh my god. People were freaking out. They were like, oh, my God, down here in uh, Tennessee. But, you know, big win and also a great experience and great exposure for everybody out there. I mean, listen, we had on a Monday night, we had a game seven of the NHL finals. I think that hockey is probably bigger now than ever before. Last night was a massive game. Connor McDavid, everybody going up there. And then also College World Series on ABC Channel 7 and then also ESPN. And the Vols able to take it. Great Monday. That's all we can ask for for sports fans. So, well, we have we've you know while we're on the subject of wins, guns, you know we've got the the wins down in Florida. I'm going to keep repeating it. The wins in Tennessee. Uh, we also have a couple of other wins on several different fronts. Uh, one of them is that the Supreme Court has granted the motion to block Joe Biden's illegal student loan plan. Uh, Congress never gave it. This is this is according to um, Andrew Bailey, A.G. Andrew Bailey. Congress never gave Biden the authority to saddle American workers with half a trillion dollars in other people's debt. This is a huge win for the Constitution. So thank goodness, because I don't want to pay for anyone's women's studies degree. Like, that's just not something I feel like I should have to concern myself with. I actually went to college, paid off all of my debts. I mean, right. you know, paid off what was owed. Uh, I got a degree that I'm actually working in that actually made sense for me. I didn't go for any fluff. I'm not trying to pass that fluff on to some other hardworking families who can barely get by as it is on their own to take care of their own family members. So this is great. Uh, I always thought it was egregious that they would even consider allowing Biden to pass along those trillions of dollars of debt onto other people. But now, finally, at least for now, we have a little bit of solace knowing that that motion has been blocked. Yeah. And what's wild about this is it's not the first time. So he was denied. Uh, it was already ruled the first time he tried to do it as un uh, unconstitutional. So then they tried, mm -hmm. you know, working the Department of Education and be like, oh, let's get around it. Let's skirt around the issue. Let's do it this way. And once again, the federal law and the judges uh, struck it down. Because why? Because we have three institutions and rules of power for a reason. You know, we have judicial, legislature, and then also, of course, the executive branch. And that's for a reason. So you can't just unilaterally dismiss debt because guess what? A lot of that's already been paid for in those schools, universities, whatever it might be, are... They need it back. And I think the larger issue is because let's be honest, I think if you learned anything the last couple of years, it's that uh, universities and colleges are way too expensive. It's like, what are you really, what are you really paying for? So I think that this is a, uh, I think, I, what I feel is, I think we need to change the system in general when it comes to college education because you're talking 70 grand. Imagine doing 70 grand and then going to Columbia and all of a sudden that madness and that chaos and yeah. happening. Be like, what are you doing? And then they're like, oh, well, where's it coming? Like, what are you doing? And then once tenure professors get in, et cetera, and all that, I truly think that college education lost their way and really truly showed themselves and the underlying motivations that a lot of them have in the recent months when we saw those protests and then professors and more getting involved in them. And when the bottom line comes down to it, it's like, what the heck are we even paying for? However, that does not dismiss the fact that you, Charlie, and me, Guns, and you, the viewer out there and the listener out there on OutKick, <laughs> are going to have to pay so much money for these people that all of a sudden are just like, oh, and it's gone. 
I would have loved my loan to be gone, but you got into an agreement for a reason. You can't do that because it will only be a slippery slope from then on. If all of a sudden you can unilaterally as an executive right there with Biden say, all right, we're going to do uh, dismiss student loans. Well, what's next? What's the next thing that they're going to, uh, you know, kind of wipe off? Try and pass That's on to everybody thing. else. Exactly. Yeah. Um, are you you're not still paying off student loans, are you? No, but I mean, I had to. I went to Fordham. I mean, yeah, of yeah, course. Uh, yeah, I went to Fordham. I mean, I mean, how, frust- how yeah. frustrating would it be, though? How frustrating would it be, though, if you were someone who just finished paying off your loans okay. and then they, you know, all of a sudden you didn't you were surrounded by all these people that got to get off scot free. You know, they didn't have to pay off their loans. That would just be ultra frustrating for me uh, to know that. Other people don't have to go through the same pain and suffering that I did or other people did. Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, the part of the uh, quote unquote American dream is like if you work hard enough, hopefully things will work out for you. But think about like the blue collar workers that went to like a Vo tech, you know, vocational schools, everything like that, that really worked themselves, uh, you know, and grinded it out. And then were able to get and put themselves through a college or state school, whatever it might be. And really did what, like, you know, human beings, like, that's what you excel to do. And all of a sudden, you're just like, are you kidding me? And the biggest thing out of all this is, and we're seeing it with millennials and Gen Z and more, is the lack of incentive. When you start, you know, participation trophy society and babying and giving excuses and reasons for people to not excel the best that they can and giving people, you know, op you know, opting out here and there, that's what's truly dangerous here. Because all of a sudden it's like, well, what the heck am I? Like, oh, well, so, you know, the government's just going to bail me out. Well, guess what? Who's paying for the government? You and I. It always comes back down to the, uh, you know, to the taxpayer out there. We see it with the, uh, you know, the illegal immigration situation out there. Imagine spending, you know, years, years, years trying to get into America legally and you finally did it. And we've seen it from time and time again that people are so joyous that, you know, when they did, it's a huge celebration and more. And then all of a sudden somebody comes across and they have, have more rights than you do. It's like that is it's like, what the heck did I just do? America's in a very uh, bizarre world right now if, if, when it comes down to it. When you start incentivizing the people that aren't working up you know, that are, are skirting around the system, that's what's wrong, because those that are following the law, following, uh, you know, the righteous path, whatever it might be. When you see it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. It's disappointing. I mean, come on, like you and I, I had to work three jobs to pay off my student loans. All of a sudden it's like, and it's What were your jobs? Yeah. Uh, I was a lifeguard, which is frightening. (laughs) Great. Okay. (laughs) Although we got $50 every save. Every time so we had to oh, save so, somebody. So what pool. were you just like? Were you just going around? You're like, hey, if you if, if you pretend to drown, I'll give you ten bucks, and I'm then you're still saying, making forty dollars off of it. That's not a bad scheme. I'm not saying, but maybe we. They're had like, a why couple is everyone of our drowning buddies. on gunship? That's so weird. <laughs> Everybody seems to be drowning when he's when he's in the chair. Fifty bucks went a long way back then. Let me tell you. So I did that, and then also um, just work. You know, <laughs> did you ever have to do mouth to mouth CPR? Um, no, thankfully all the rescues I had to do were people that just like <laughs> wandered into the deep end and I would look over and I'm like, this guy's going down, but luckily he did not, you know, CPR, but I am trained okay. in that Charlie. Hey, Charlie, don't worry. I am trained in a uh, CPR. If you need oh, to. great. Great. I can't, I can't wait to be drowning while you're on shift. Okay. Right. What were your other jobs? I did that. And then I was a, a golf caddy throughout college. The summer. I mean, you can, you double okay. bag it. You can make some good money right there. And then uh, I was the intern yeah. WABC, IMS, all that kind of stuff too, as well. And got paid through there. So, but let me ask you this, Charlie. What is yes. your what's your worst job slash job that nobody would think that you had to do in your life? My worst job. Okay, so actually. I had like pretty sweet summer jobs. I was just talking about this with my friend over the weekend. My first summer job that I ever had was I was uh, worked at an ice cream shop right on the beach in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. It was 
incredible, not only because I got unlimited free ice cream, but because there would be surf competitions on the beach oh, no. that I was working, and all of the hot surfers would come in to get ice cream when they were done. So I was like living in paradise. It was literally amazing. Then I went on to work the next summer at a sandwich shop, also in Wrightsville Beach, which was also amazing. They had the best pimento cheese ever, which obviously I would indulge in while I was working. Uh, But I also, I was a surfer myself, so I would go surfing before my shift. I'd go in with the beachy waves. I'd go surf some sandwiches. I'd hit the beach after. I mean, honestly, life was great growing up, and I miss it. Wow. And then uh, my my third job was back in Indianapolis. I was a hostess at an Italian restaurant, and our owner, who is now in jail for running a massive Ponzi scheme, would always bring in Playboy Playmates, one on each arm, and he would dine with both of them. I mean, it was just, and then we would have a mezzanine uh, up on the second floor where my best friend, who also worked with me, she was my volleyball teammate and best friend, we would go up and partake in maybe um, some beverages that we shouldn't have been able to partake in at that point in time, and we would then go out for the, it was just like, honestly, like, great a great yeah. experience working growing up. Um, but my worst job, since you asked, my worst job was when I worked for WWE initially and I was in charge of helping to set up the rings at like local gyms around like Florida, oh, yeah. Yeah. speaking of, that we would have to, because this was like when I first started. Uh, I got promoted very quickly, thank goodness. But you were expected to help set up the rings in like these local gyms where we were having the local yep. shows in NXT. So I was like crawling on the ground to like hook up a cord. And I was thinking to myself, what have I done? What yeah. have I done? I was like on in local news before that, you know, on TV. And now, and now I'm crawling it. across a dirty gym floor to set up a cable. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I've made the wrong decision. But luckily things turned out just fine. Uh, but there you go. Those are there Those are go. the jobs yeah. that I've held. Why do I why do I think that you did that uh, tactic that we've all done? Viewers, listeners out there, everybody has done as well, where it's like if you don't want to do something or also you know that you're not really good at whatever you're tasked to do, that you're going to just be like, you know, a semi good job. So th- whoever's in charge is just like, let me take care of it. We've all been there. It's like, you know, you're like setting up the ring. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. They're just like, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it, Charlie. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah, for those the were better. big times. Except- Probably for the better. Were you in charge of the ropes? <laughs> like if somebody was running against the rope, would they? <clears throat> well, we had to set up the whole ring. So, yeah, That's like wild. you would yeah. have to make sure everything was like secure. And yeah. I mean, truly, I remember it being like, what have I done? But it all worked out. Guns were fine. Things worked out just fine. Uh, course, and hopefully yeah. they will continue to to keep climbing from here. Um, yeah. Okay, before I let you go, Guns, speaking of jobs, you know, you're always going to potentially hold jobs you didn't know that you were going to, even when you have a whole nother career going at the same time. Joe Burrow has no intention on giving up his quarterback role, but he's now also a model as we have seen, as evidenced recently in Paris, he has been strutting down the runway in Vogue world. I mean, honestly, if I didn't know, if I was just a random girl and I was looking at this photo, I wouldn't think to myself, oh, that guy's a quarterback. I would truly just think, oh, this guy is a hot model. He looks great. Joe Cool became Joe Hot. Yeah, you really think about it. Nothing cool. <laughs> nothing cool about him. He's 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 on fire. That's what. Let, let me ask you this though: Are you who's hotter, Joe Burrow or Travis Kelsey? If you're Charlie right now. Oh God, why? What do you mean? That's not even a question. Joe Burrow is way hotter. I don't who's think Travis hot? Kelsey is hot. Okay. Oh, who's hotter? Who, like in terms of like what they're well, doing no, or like looks wise? No, 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 looks wise, of course. Yeah. Who's hot? So is Joe? Okay, Burrow, Joe. Yeah. Joe Burrow's hotter, looks wise, but in terms of like making a buzz, Travis Kelsey, obviously he was on stage with Taylor Swift overseas yeah. recently. I mean, you can't really beat that. So they've each got their their hotness raising the scales in different areas. No, I'll give you that for sure. Like, um, 
Yeah, no, I mean, Joe Burrow even doing this is definitely him uh, building in and shout out to his publicist and his team for uh, getting him involved in this to make him more of a re- you know renowned person, et cetera, for, uh, you know, doing this, this walk, if you would, and all this, uh, the fashion show stuff. Of course, you know, the fan base, though, it's going to be like, listen, you can do all the stuff that you want. Listen, I'm a Jets fan. Aaron Rodgers, go out to wherever you need to do, take whatever you need to do. But when it comes to playing, please, for the love of God, A, don't get hurt, and B, just do what you're supposed to do. So if you're Joe Burrow with all the lights on you, you're doing this, the fashion shows, et cetera, all the fan base is going to care about is perform when it matters. You know what I mean? Like perform when it matters. So, like, yeah. like when guns would jump in the pool to save someone when they're drowning. Just make sure you yeah. perform when it matters. <laughs> All right, guns, I'm going to let you go now. Go, uh, I don't know, maybe there's another lifeguarding job that needs, you know, another yeah. hand on deck. So, sure. yeah, 50 Charlie, bucks goes a long way. Quick? You said that. Can I tell you yeah. something real quick? So, speaking of you saving can. lives, yesterday I had my door open and a bird flew in. And uh, oh. you, you know me. I, uh, I'm not very good with like things like that. And Nature also, boy. Like, okay. what the heck am I supposed to do? So I was like, I try to get a broom to get it out. Not happening. So I grab a McDonald's bag and I'm running to try and capture a bird <laughs> to, uh, to get it out of the house. I mean, what would you do? How do you get a bird out of your apartment if it flies in? What would you do? I would literally just leave the door open and hope it flew out. I wouldn't put in any other effort, I don't believe, but... I appreciate your effort, and I appreciate that you just had McDonald's because I love McDonald's myself. So there you go. Another reason why I always love you having go. you on the show, Guns. Saving Thank you so much. Saving saving birds. That's what we do. How you doing? <laughs> there you Take go. Care. Good seeing you. All right, everybody, before I let you go, I just wanted to let you all know that apparently I am a racist, according to this guy. Listen. This is how much people hate fat people. They just hate them. Like, there's, like, this weird hatred that's it feels almost akin to racism this is not like racism it is racism anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness and the reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness the reason why people hate fat people is because people hate black people and appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness especially black women and that's why they're discriminated in the workplace um, overly sexualized and this has gone back for centuries and centuries all systems of oppression capitalism sexism racism it all comes back to white supremacy which is the foundation of the fabric of america and rules every sector and aspect of our society my first question is does she have a teleprompter or did she memorize that spiel before she went on to social media because it was a pretty flawless presentation. She spoke very eloquently. I just, I feel like there has to have been some type of aid there uh, for her to do so. Uh, I'm not anti-fat. I'm anti-unhealthy. I'm going to stick with that. I want people to be healthy. I want them to live long, fruitful lives. And there's that. So nothing racist about it. I just want people to live their best, healthy lives. Uh, just like I want you to go do the same. So thank you so much for watching the show. Hope you'll be here tomorrow. Love all of you. Follow me on social media at Charlie on TV. Go have a great day, a healthy one, and I'll see you later this week. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. As you know, the Woke Sports Media is in shambles and OutKick is on top. So make sure you're tuning into my show, OutKick the Morning, for your fill of sports, pop culture, politics, and everything in between. For more original content, make sure you're clicking here. And also make sure you're subscribing by clicking here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Catch more later.